Good morning from Sydney, Australia. My name is Simon Reynolds. I'm a principal of Spruce and Ferguson. Today I'm accompanied by Aisha Lee, who is also a principal in Spruce and Ferguson. As way of background, uh, Spruce and Ferguson operate in the Asia Pacific region of the world. We have nine offices located throughout this region and can operate in 25 different jurisdictions. Both Aisha and myself specialize in the protection of computer implemented inventions, which brings us to today's topic, the patentability of computer implemented inventions in Australia. Generally, a computer implemented invention is patentable in Australia if it provides a technical contribution over the state of the art. An invention which satisfies the UK Aerotel Macrossan test will likely be patentable in Australia. However, there may be some unpatentable inventions in the UK that may be patentable in Australia. Patentable subject matter is referred to as a manner of manufacture under the Patents Act 1990, which is a reference to Section 6 of the Statute of Monopolies from 1623. The test has been developed through case law and this provides some flexibility uh, in terms of the requirements for patentable subject matter as technology uh, it changes over time. There are two main High Court decisions, namely uh, NRDC versus the Commissioner of Patents and DRC versus Myriad Genetics. In relation to NRDC, the two main requirements for patentable subject matter are that there must be an artificial state of affairs and that the product must be economic. Uh, this decision came down in 1959 and it was a number of years later in 2015 that the High Court clarified that decision stating that the artificial state of affairs and economic requirements are merely part of the overall inquiry and that it is incorrect to elevate form over substance, meaning that you must take into account the characterization of the invention. What I'm going to do now is take you through a historical development of the case law that relates to computer implemented inventions. Uh, those two decisions we just talked about, uh, NRDC and uh, Myriad, aren't computer related. The first decision was IBM uh, Machines, uh, so IBM uh, Corporation, sorry, versus uh, Commissioner of Patents. Uh, this invention related to the use of uh, mathematical formula in a computer to produce an Im improved curve image. Uh, there was nothing new about the mathematics involved uh, in relation to um, uh, what was being performed by the computer. Uh, up until this stage, uh, curves have been generated using floating point uh, data structures, but it was the application of the specific uh, mathematical method to the computer that was considered to be uh, patentable subject matter. Uh, turning to CECOM versus uh, Jing, uh, the invention in question related to an interface with a database that contained a data structure of Chinese language characters. Uh, which encoded strokes by stroke type. So effectively, someone could use a normal QWERTY keyboard and produce Chinese language characters in a word processing document. Again, we'll see from this quote from the, uh, the decision that uh, the full court is applying the NRDC uh, test in a fairly mechanistic manner in terms of identifying an artificially created state of affairs and that the invention has economic endeavor. Uh, importantly, in this decision, the, uh, which was an appeal from the federal court, the full federal court made it clear that manner of manufacture is a separate requirement to novelty and inventive step. And they made reference to an example of a ballpoint pen where uh, a claim towards such an invention would be lacking novelty and inventive step, but would still be a manner of manufacture. And that... Um, there's no reason to uh, decide whether something is a matter of manufacture based on whether it's new and unconventional in computer use. This portion of CECOM has caused a number of issues um, in later decisions. For the next 15 years, the, this area of law was relatively stable. 
Uh, and then the US Supreme Court issued the Bilski decision, which has had a significant impact in Australia in terms of it being quite influential in our case law. Uh, Invention pathways related to uh, an invention for commercializing inventions, which included a step of creating an electronically fillable checklist. Uh, the majority of the steps were manual steps, but this one step was performed by the computer. And uh, up until that stage, if a claim included reference to uh, a computer performing the method, uh, then it was considered patentable subject matter. But um, the hearing officer in this decision uh, indicated that the physical effect had to be central to the purpose of the operation of the claimed process or otherwise uh, it ar arose from the combination of steps of the method in a substantial way. So the, the hearing officer gave the example of uh, a step of building a house which involves a concrete physical effect but it's peripheral to the method of acquiring a house. So we start to see this uh, aspect of trying to work out the, the, the characterization of the invention to some extent, although um, uh, determining whether certain um, features are peripheral is not considered current part of the current case law. A number of hearing office decisions were issued after invention pathways and eventually one went on an appeal to the federal court, namely research affiliates. This invention related to a method and system for calculating a financial index. Um, research affiliates proposed the, that any implementation of an abstract idea or scheme by a computer is considered to be a an artificial effect and therefore patentable subject matter. The full federal court was quite clear that such uh, a concept is one of form, not substance, and that substance should be considered over form. Um, in the current uh, context of this invention, effectively the substance of the invention was merely uh, the content of the data, namely a, a number, and that it provided no improvement to the operation of the computer, and thus the invention was not considered patentable subject matter. Turning now to the RPL central decision, uh, this invention related to the computerized assessment of the competency or qualification of individuals res with respect to recognized standards. So for example, a university student may be able to provide evidence in order to uh, obtain certain credit points to undertake a particular university degree. Uh, in the uh, federal court decision, uh, the, the court appears to have been quite influenced by that paragraph that I previously referred to from CECOM uh, in relation to there not being a requirement that uh, steps need to be foreign to the normal use of computers in order for the invention to be patentable subject matter for a computer implemented invention. And in this particular instance, the, the um, primary judge noted that the specification and claims in issue uh, provided significant information about how the invention is implemented by the computer. So it's, it, it, the specification did not come across as being an abstract idea. There was sufficient information to uh, uh, build the invention or practice the invention. On appeal though, the uh, federal, full federal court um, overturned uh, that conclusion and, and concluded that the uh, invention was not patentable subject matter. Uh, in context, the Myriad decision had been handed down shortly prior to this decision uh, by the High Court and there was a heavy emphasis in relation to the substance uh, over form concept and also in relation to that the artificial state of affairs and the physical effect are merely part of the overall inquiry. Uh, in this particular instance the, the uh, full federal court uh, emphasized that there needs to be some form of improvement in the computer technology. It's 
not uh, possible that you can have a patentable invention simply by putting a, com a business method into a computer and implement that business method using the computer for its well-known and understood functions such as speed of processing. Turning to Aristocrat, uh, this uh, hearing office decision uh, related to an electronic gaming machine which presented game information in a way that allows the game and the bet denomination to be selected in a single action. So there was a single button that allowed you to select both of those uh, aspects of the game. Uh, again, we see reference to the substance of the invention, so the characterization. Uh, and we see in this particular instance, the hearing officer indicate that they're, that uh, being able to select both of these features simultaneously provides practic a practical and useful result. Uh, and whilst it was implemented using a generic computer, it, it wasn't typical at the time um, to perform such functionality uh, using electronic gaming machines. And uh, in this regard, it was considered to improve the gaming machine and that the contribution was technical in nature. So in this particular instance, the invention was considered to be patentable subject matter. Uh, turning to another hearing office decision, Biorad, uh, this invention related to optimizing a testing regime for testing of diagnostic devices. Uh, in, again, in this particular instance, we see references to the invention being technical in nature and there being some analogy to this invention with respect to the IBM decision in terms of it involved uh, an application of certain mathematical formula uh, for a, a particular field of technology. So again, in this particular instance, this invention was considered to be a patentable subject matter because it was technical in nature. Uh, turning to Encompass, uh, this invention related to a federated search method and system. And in, in this particular instance, uh, the, the federal court makes it quite clear that it's not merely enough to satisfy those two steps of NRDC, namely the physical effect and economic requirements. It must be performing some form of improvement in the computer. Um, and in this particular instance, you can see in this last paragraph that the federal court is somewhat struggling to identify what exactly is meant by an improvement. Um, but nevertheless, it, it does appear to be a, a requirement that the computer must be improved in some manner. Now turning to the Rock decision, um, in first instance at federal court, uh, the this particular invention related to an online marketing method. And in this case, there was substantial evidence being presented by experts of both parties. And in this instance, the, the evidence was presented as uh, two different views on the, on the characterization of the invention. And the, the uh, primary judge selected one of the experts to, as favorable and uh, decided that the expert of Rockt uh, indicated that the uh, substance of the invention was patentable subject matter. Now that uh, use of expert evidence was later overturned on appeal. And so the use of expert evidence is no longer uh, considered to be uh, necessary or, or, or used in order to determine the substance of the invention because that's part of the uh, court's requirements. Uh, nevertheless, there is part of the Rock decision which is important, which relates to uh, considering uh, the integers in combination. You can't simply compare the integers in isolation to the state of the art to determine the technical contribution. It must be considered in combination. On appeal, uh, effectively, the uh, once the court was allowed the opportunity to decide what the substance of the invention was, in this instance, it was determined that it was a marketing scheme and therefore there was no improvement to the computing technology. That 
brings us to the most recent decision in relation to Aristocrat uh, 2020, um, which I'll now hand over to uh, Aisha uh, to explain the current test uh, as it currently stands. Thank you, Simon, and welcome to my office, everyone. So as you can see, we've had case law develop in this space over the years. The case law as a whole was considered in the Aristocrat case in 2020. So in this case, Aristocrat Technologies appealed a decision of the Commissioner for Patents that their invention was not for a patentable subject matter. The invention in this case was an electronic gaming machine comprising a combination of hardware and software. In reviewing all the case law, the court distilled a two-step test. The first step being, consider whether the invention is related to a mere scheme or business method. If no, then your claim is for patentable subject matter. If yes, go to step two. Step two involves considering whether the invention is in the computerization of the scheme or business method. So in this instance, the federal court found that the invention was actually for patentable subject matter. A number of considerations were made along the way. Firstly, the Commission for Patents had conceded that a mechanical equivalent of the game machine was patentable subject matter. The court had also heard a large amount of expert evidence that showed the highly regulated nature of gaming machines. And finally, the court noted that gaming machines must have a particular construction and are built for a specific and limited purpose. So it looks like we are getting a clear test developed through the case law. However, this is not the end. The, uh, the decision has been appealed by the full federal court and the appeal was heard late last year. We expect to receive an, up receive an update later this year. So how are we seeing the steps applied at the Australian Patent Office? Looking at step one, is a claimed invention for a mere scheme or business method? We're generally seeing this applied quite narrowly. We've included some excerpts from the Australian Patent Office examination manual in the slides. As you can see, only a specific purpose device is considered to satisfy step one. This is a well-defined computing device designed only to perform functions defined by the claims and cannot be customized for other actions. In contrast, general purpose computer systems are not considered to fall under step one. Generally, something that can be customizable for other uses, for example, using a server, is being found not to fall under step one. Now, there is a lot of debate as to whether this interpretation is justified. It could be argued that determining whether the invention is for a mere scheme or business method is a much broader consideration than whether the invention is for a specific purpose, device or not. We're going to have to wait the appeal decision from the full federal court to see if we get more insight in this regard. So what are we seeing in terms of step two, which is where a lot of the debate is occurring at the Australian Patent Office? is the invention in the computerization. The Australian Patent Office lists a number of considerations, often referred to as the RPL or aristocrat factors, in, used in assessing the step. I won't go through them one by one, but the general technical nature of the invention needs to be highlighted. We're looking at whether the contribution of the invention is technical, does it provide a technical solution to a technical problem? Is there some ingenuity in the way the invention is actually implemented using computer technology and does it relate to more than just mere processing, presentation, or arrangement of intellectual information. It is important to remember that steps one and two relate to the substance of the invention. So we need to define the substance for this consideration. This is a characterization of the invention rather than determination of the scope of the claims. We have been given some guidance of factors to be considered and weigh up. These include the contribution to the art asserted by the specification itself, as well as contribution to the art to the state of its art of the art at the priority date. We also consider things like the level of detail provided in the specification, how the invention works, any problems it addresses, and advantages it provides. It provides, and also the form of the words and the breadth and emphasis of the claims. So as you can see, this is turning into a, something that must be considered case by case. It's very difficult to give a blanket assessment in terms of a particular technology. As you can also imagine, we are seeing a lot of debate at the Australian Patent Office over what is technical and what is not technical. And we've seen several hearing decisions issued by the Australian Patent Office in the last year or so. We've listed some of these for your reference to show the variations in technology. I won't go through them one by one, but there are some which are worth considering. Firstly, in the Facebook decision, the invention enabled apps to communicate with each other by accessing shared memory. The examiner found that this overcame the problem of sandboxing, such that the computer could achieve something that was previously not achievable. 
In the Jagwood case, the invention raised a software for reconciling electronic payment with a financial document. Interestingly, interestingly in this, the examiner found that there was a technical perspective and a non-technical perspective that could be taken of the invention. The examiner opted for the technical perspective based on the integers of the claims themselves. The eBay decision was found to be for patentable subject matter for an invention relating to presentation of an augmented reality experience to assist a user at an event. This was an adaptive and real-time invention, which may have been of assistance in establishing the technical nature. In contrast, in Amazon Technologies, the invention related to accessing additional computing resources during bursts of high demand. The examiner did note that this was technical in a very narrow set of circumstances, but still found that the claimed invention was not for a patentable subject matter. During the course of his consideration, the examiner considered factors such as the level of implementation detail in this specification, and that he considered the invention to address a business problem rather than a technical problem. Another set of cases, CareFusion 303, were found not to be for practical subject matter. These inventions related to filing orders and delivering medications. This case highlights the importance of the substance. A barcode reader was found not to be part of the substance of the invention. Because of this, the Aristocrat 2020 consideration cannot be used. In other words, the invention did not relate to a specific purpose device. So now that we've looked at Australian case law and what's happening in the Australian Patent Office, what practical tips can we glean from these? The strategies for com prosecuting computer implemented inventions in Australia include an examiner interview and requesting a hearing. Unlike other jurisdictions, examiner interviews are informal and are at the discretion of the examiner. However, they can be useful, at least in determining the examiner's reading of the invention and finding a direction in which the application can perhaps progress. Requesting a hearing can be beneficial in that a new examiner, a senior examining officer, will review the application. The downside to this is that the officer may agree with the original examiner and may issue a written refusal. For this reason, we normally recommend filing divisional application. A hearing is normally run through written submissions rather than appearing in person and provides an opportunity to provide comprehensive arguments if that has not already been done. In terms of arguments for prosecution, it is important to consider all of the second step factors which we previously discussed, the RPL or aristocrat factors. As I mentioned, it's not always important to meet each and every one of them, but it is important to highlight the technical nature of the invention as much as possible, and these provide a useful mechanism to do this. In terms of amendments, there are several options you can take. Firstly, can the invention be amended to relate to a specific purpose device? If so, then the Aristocrat 2020 decision can be used. This will perhaps change when the appeal is handed down. You can also look at subject matter that can uh, highlight the fact that the claim invention addresses the technical problem or addresses the technical nature. In terms of drafting, it's becoming increasingly important to highlight technical advantages and technical problems in the art in the specification. It's also important to include a detailed technical description. The failure to do either of those may make a satisfying examiner of the claimed invention provides a technical contribution or is technical in nature more difficult. As we've seen in Encompass, it is dangerous to allow an opinion that a person's skill of the art is left to decide the implementation details. So that's a general roundup of what's been going on in Australia and how it has been useful to you and interesting to you. As you've seen, we've had a lot going on in the space and we expect more to come in future. Thank you very much for your time. It's been a pleasure to be involved in the conference and I hope the rest of the conference is enjoyable. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact us. Our details are above. I, would, I do believe there is a question and answer session. Thank you and take care and stay safe.